Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarab al -Fatih. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued today Royal Orders 5, 6 and 7 for 2017. Royal Decree 5 of 2017 stipulated the replacement of the text of Article 1 of Royal Decree 52 of 2009 regarding the establishment of Bahrain Center for Strategic, International and Energy Studies to read as follows. An independent specialized center shall be established under the name of Bahrain Center Center for Strategic, International and Energy Studies that will submit its report regularly to the Foreign Ministry. Royal Decree 6 of 2017 restructured the Board of Trustees of Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies presided over by Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the following members Dr. Ahmed Hashim Al Yosha, Dr. Wahib Isa Nasser, Ambassador Tawfiq Ahmed Al Mansour, Dr. Abd Rahman Abdul Hussein Jawahri, and Dr. Khalifa Ali Al Fadl for a four year term. Royal Decree No. 7 of 2017 appointed the following members as representatives of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Consultative Authority at the Arabian Gulf Corporation Council, the GCC State's Supreme Council. Dr. Sheikha Maryam bint Hassan Al Khalifa, Dr. Faisal Yaqub Al Hamar, Dr. Abdullah Yusuf Talib, Dr. Jamila Mansour Al Samak, and Ali Ahmed Al Darazi for a three years term. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from National Guard Commander Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa for patronizing the National Guard's 20th establishment anniversary celebration. The National Guard Commander vowed that the National Guard Force will always carry out the national duties and defend the homeland civilizational and developmental achievements alongside their brethren in arms of Bahrain Defense Force and Interior Ministry Force. He said the royal directives given during his Majesty's visit to the National Guard will lead towards bringing more progress, development and prosperity. He prayed to Almighty God to bless His Majesty the King with abundant good health and happiness to continue leading the march of development and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended the wedding ceremony of Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, the grandson of His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, which took place today at His Royal Highness's palace in Rafah. The ceremony was also attended by senior family members and high-ranking guests. His Majesty the King expressed his congratulations to His Royal Highness the Premier and to the Deputy Premier Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and to Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali Al Khalifa, wishing him a happy wedded life. His Royal Highness the Premier expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his kind sentiments, praying God Almighty to bless His Majesty with abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at the Qadabiya Palace for the occasion of Bahrain's National Sports Day, which happens to be on the 7th of February. His Royal Highness directed to dedicate half of the working hours for sports activities. He also directed the ministries and the governmental bodies to organize the sporting events that allows employees to achieve the objectives of this sports day and bring awareness of the importance of exercise as well as its role in the life of the individual 
and society. The cabinet has expressed its condemnation of the heinous terrorist act that took place in Bilad al Ghadim, taking the life of Lieutenant Hisham Hassan Mohammed al Hamadi. The cabinet went on to express its deepest condolences and sympathies to the family of the fallen lieutenant, praying to God Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. His Royal Highness the Premier has directed to crack down on terrorists and to uphold strict implementation of laws as outlaws must be met with swift justice in the efforts of not allowing terrorism to settle in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He continued to hail the efforts of policemen and their continued sacrifices for their country to preserve its peace and security. He also affirmed these treacherous acts shall not affect the determination of the Bahraini government and its people to root out extremism and terrorism. His Royal Highness the Premier has welcomed Bahrain's win in hosting the World Cup Indoor Skydiving Championship 2018, noting that organizing such events would boost Bahrain's stance on the sports and tourism levels. He commended the efforts of Gravity Company Chairman Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa that supported the nomination of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The cabinet reviewed means to develop Khalifa bin Salman port by increasing the number of services it provides in accordance with the current economic situation. In this regard, the cabinet reviewed the report of the port's operating company. The cabinet looked into providing the requirements of construction projects using dredged sand. The cabinet discussed amending the fees of importing and exporting anesthetics and psychotropic drugs manufactured by the Ministry of Health as well as the manufacturing license fees to make drugs that contain the previously mentioned substances. The cabinet assigned the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs to take the necessary legal and constitutional measures to ratify the agreement signed between Bahrain and Cyprus on the 9th of March 2015 regarding fighting terrorism, drug dealing, illegal immigration and criminal offences. The cabinet reviewed the mechanism suggested by the Gulf Corporation Council Secretariat General to ensure prompt execution of the agreements, regulations and laws adopted by the Supreme Council of the GCC. The cabinet decided to refer it to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs and the Cabinet approved signing three MOUs on the sidelines of the anticipated meeting of the Bahrain-Pakistan Joint Ministerial Commission. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a letter from the President of the Friendly Republic of Mongolia, Tachagin El Budroj. The letter was handed to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, by the Mongolian President's Envoy for Foreign Affairs, Landik Purov Shurin, as he received him today. During the meeting, they discussed the friendship and cooperation ties and ways to further bolster them. They exchanged views on a number of topics as well as regional and global issues of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs welcomed the Mongolian President's envoy for foreign affairs. He expressed a pride in the brotherly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Mongolia. They also reviewed ways of bolstering bilateral relations for the benefit of Bahrain and Mongolia, as well as to coordinate the, their stances at international gatherings. For his part, the Mongolian President's envoy for foreign affairs expressed delight for having visited Bahrain and met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He Affirmed his country's desire to develop its ties with the Kingdom of Bahrain at all levels. He also hailed the progress and development achieved by the Kingdom of Bahrain in all fields and wished Bahrain further progress and prosperity. 
Thousands of citizens and residents, as well as a large number of officers and members from the Ministry of Interior, led by the Public Security Chief, Major General Tariq Al Hassan, took part today in the funeral procession of an affiliate of the Ministry of Interior, First Lieutenant Hisham Hassan Mohammed Al Hamadi, in Al Hnainiya Cemetery in Rufa. After the burial, mourners offered their condolences to the family of the martyr and to the people of Bahrain, praying God Almighty to rest the soul of the victim in eternal peace. They also hailed the, his sacrifice in defending and preserving the security of Bahrain. They also commended the key role played by the security personnel to promote security and wished them and the Ministry of Interior success in carrying their noble duty. United Nations officials and diplomats today gathered at Bahrain's UN House to confirm solidarity with the Palestinian cause and support of recent UN resolutions opposing Israel's illegal settlement activity in occupied Palestinian territory, whilst discussing plans for the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. Daniel Deporto reports. The International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian People has been observed annually on November 29th since it was established by the United Nations General Assembly in 1977. This year holds special significance as June 4th will mark 50 years of Israel's occupation of Palestinian territory. On December 23rd, the UN Security Council passed its first resolution on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict for almost eight years, demanding an end to the construction of Israeli settlements on occupied Palestinian territories. This day um, is meant to keep the Palestinian cause on the table for the international community uh, to mobilize global and international action uh, to recognize the un equivalent um, the, 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 um, uh, the rights of the Palestinian uh, people for uh, um, demonstrating their rights in uh, returning to their lands, in establishing their uh, national uh, borders and, and establish a state that is recognized by the international community and for the people to demonstrate their rights in development uh, alongside with all the nations in, uh, on, uh, on earth. Officials gathered at Bahrain's UN House to discuss key points relating to the 2017 International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people, encouraging the international community to follow Bahrain's lead in supporting human rights and development in Palestine, denouncing illegal occupation and settlement activities by Israel, and encouraging both sides to negotiate peace within the framework of international law and UN resolutions. Bahrain played a very important role to support the Palestinians, not only in the General Assembly or within the other UN uh, agencies, the UNESCO and others, but also on bilateral means. We understand that Bahrain, they supported many UN agencies in their uh, work in Palestine, especially UNRWA. They helped a lot in Gaza and they helped a lot in Jerusalem while helping the uh, Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem University uh, to, to uh, in, in many programs 
including the library and others. They also support uh, all the Palestinian uh, the projects that we implement. They support the international framework to help the Palestinian people, uh, including the framework that goes to the investment, financing, supporting, uh, technical support. Uh, as you know, whenever we have a, a resolution to uh, to be shaped to sell to help the Palestinians, uh, all members states should support it, and usually Bahrain steps in the front lines to support these uh, these efforts. Uh, even uh, and also we have the Royal uh, Charity Organization, which always spend a lot of effort to support the Palestinians. 2017 marks 50 years of occupation for the Palestinian people, which lends extra significance to this year's International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people to be observed on November 29th. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Danielle DePorto. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohammed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,304.06 points, marking an increase of 1.69 points above last closing. The increase was in the commercial banks, investment, and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 81% of total shares. 109 transactions included 9,736,738 shares worth 1,224,102 Bahraini dinars. Under the directives of the Central Bank of Bahrain, Khaliji Commercial Bank announced the launch of banking services to clients with special needs in its branches in Jufair. The branch has been supplied with an ATM that provides visual and auditory technological means to meet the needs of individuals and fac facilitate the communication process. Also, the branch's staff has been trained in sign language and the model is equipped with entrances and exits to allow them easy accessibility.